Nestling beneath the North York Moors is the village of Thornton the Dale. And for over 30 years, it's been the home of the Matthewsons, a dynasty of dealers with a love of classics. They just have a personality, there's just something about them. In all shapes and sizes. Well, it is the best job ever, really, isn't it? A passion that can be turned into brass. They auction over 4,000 rare vehicles every year. Start me on it, we're gonna be with it. Most people will go to a sale with something in mind, but come away with something different. Something's either got it or it hasn't. It's what they fall in love with on that day. There's head of the family, Derek. What a runner. Smooth as silk, this car. Trusted lieutenants, son's Paul. Working with your family, it has its ups and its downs. God, blimey. And Dave. I bet you a pound it doesn't start. The fun is the chase. Blimey, Matthew, sons. You just don't know what's on the end of the phone, what you're going to find when you open them doors. Spot on. That's the find of the century. It's the real deal. Just never really two days exactly the same. This is a family's love affair with motors that have lived a life. There's a story behind every car in this building. Testing, testing. Most people will buy a car because they can relate to it. Maybe a car that Dad had. We're selling dreams. Right, here we go. sale this week. Here we are, MGSA, big money car when they're finished. This is the side of the car here. This is the branch and the tree was growing through the middle of it. <sighs> wow. Gee whiz. They were a labour of love, weren't they, these? Lot number 94, Sphere and Spider. Unusual little car. Everybody looks at it and it reminds me of being like 17, 18 again. Very Italian. You see, like, slick back air, can't you? Winkle pickers. <laughs> Here it is, 83 Escort RS 1600. A family racing car. I couldn't help but like it, you know. The Recaro seats, it's a very nice car. First impressions then, Derek? Horrible. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, I don't do bikes, so I don't know why there's a lot of interest in this, because it looks like it should be thrown in a skip to me, but... Another hectic day on the Matthewson's merry-go-round. <laughs> you were the successful bidder on lot number 95, yeah? you a deal on this one. Dave's making space in the yard. Right, I'm off, I'll see you in a minute. Paul sold a large piece of wood. All right, we all like toys and shiny stuff, don't we? We're all magpies, really, aren't we? And Derek's leading by example. Oh, yeah. Hello, Matthew Sands. Oh, yeah, it's been busy again this morning. It's just like getting cars out and messing about. I don't like all that sort of thing. It's yes. not my cup of tea, but um, I like bringing them in. I'm committed myself stupidly to go and do a couple of collections, which I've got to do, because I've now committed myself. The rest of us seem to be working to live. Father seems to live to work. I don't know which one of us has got it the right and the wrong way round, really, you know. The father and son dream team are prepping for a short trip to East Yorkshire. <laughs> yeah, had it in the wrong holes. Two Matthewsons, two separate trucks. There's a garage of bits waiting in hull. Some car restorations involve a bit of light fettling. Maybe a few panels knocked back into shape. And then there are those that make you think, how they managed to make it look like a car again. Two MGSAs, and one of them has an astonishing history. It was found more than 20 years ago, rooted to the ground in a garden in London. So this is the side of the car. You can see here, there's the branch and the tree growing through it. I think if you would touch that bodywork as it is now, it would just crumble in your fingers. It is that corroded. The saviour of the car was Sarah Wong's dad, David Hatton. He was like he'd won the lottery. He wanted to show everybody what he'd got. He had ideas of what these cars were going to be. He could see the end picture, always. David passed away before he was able to complete the restoration of this MGSA and another he was working on. Sarah has now decided to sell the pair. This was 
about ready. He's just got them few little bits that he's circled and then it would get sprayed in classic colours and go off to be loved, to be, to be driven. When the MGSA landed in the mid-1930s, it caused a bit of a stir. It was the biggest MG ever made, a luxury sports saloon launched with a two-litre engine. He loved them. He loved them like he would love a person. They were his babies, and these were his passion, his retirement, his life. Nobody would believe from the pictures that you've seen of a tree growing through this vehicle that this is what he's managed to get it to. And he's done it. Almost. Almost. Derek and Paul have arrived, and they've soon got their hands full. Right, then. We'll have to see if we can get um, these shoved out and winched on, won't we? We're just seeing how many, how many bits we've got. The cars are a jumble of parts, right but their journey to get to this is impressive. <gasps> no! The car we stood in front of was that. <gasps> Look at that. <sighs> wow. Gee whiz. That's grim, isn't it? I've seen some projects and some guys tackle some things, but... <sighs> They were a labour of love, weren't they, these? Wow, indeed. Oof. Straight up. This was the one that was on that picture of it. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It's just PTU, After the best part of 20 years undercover, the MGSAs finally see the light of day. Who knows what you were doing this old lad? Very, very good, yeah. Well put together. I couldn't let go of my dad's old car. I mean, it's only an old car, Marina. But I just couldn't part with it. It sat there and stupidly, it, it deteriorated. I should have let it go. But you don't. You hang on and it's just making the decision and the break to do it. It's not easy. Sarah hopes the project her dad started can now be completed. I would really love to see it done for him, for his legacy. He was almost there. The family knows it's hard to value partly restored cars. I think we ought to aim for ten apiece. I mean, I know there's a lot of work and all the rest of it, but there's a lot of money and a lot of the work has been done, hasn't it? And there's, there's only a small amount of people that are prepared to take on... Um, it's got to be somebody that likes the car and yeah, somebody absolutely. that's interested in absolutely. it. Absolutely, of course it has, yeah. It's got to be a real enthusiast. Uh, and fortunately, it's the type of model that will attract that. Not every car that comes to auction is a major restoration project. Some arrive road ready. And this iconic Italian stallion from the northeast is about to have a final gallop before it heads for auction. This 1980 Fiat 124 Spider is a rare sight. A little slice of Dolce Vita on British roads. You've got to drive that car. It's smashing, it's good fun, everyone looks at you, and it reminds me of being like 17, 18 again. Peter Ratton bought the little Fiat three years ago from the USA. I looked on the internet, made a bit on it, bought it, got it shipped over, picked it up from Felix Store Docks on the trailer, could have sold it on the way home. The last in the car that I want to stop for a cup of coffee, he said, do you want to sell that? I said, no. <laughs> They weren't sold in England, they were only sold in, in uh, Europe. They're all left hand drive. And any that did come over here, well, they rotted away years ago. Peter's no stranger to tinkering with cars, but he's had his fun and he's looking for a new challenge. The whole thing was taken to bits, all the interior out of it. I took all the paint off it right down to bare metal, and then a pal of mine repainted it for me. I cut all the carpets out, took all the seats out sourced some new seats, frames. That's fun in doing that. It's not the first one I've done, it won't be the last, probably. The 124 Sport Coupe came to the UK in 1967, styled by the man who gave us the Ferrari 250 GT. Fiat declared the car was meticulously built for a privileged minority. It was about twice the price of a Cortina. The spin-off Spider was a Pininfarina masterclass. It was never sold to the UK, 
So whilst we bought NGBs, the Italians and Californians opted for something a bit more Sophia Loren. Most UK spiders are imports from the USA, where they sold in large numbers. The glamorous Fiat had many facelifts over its many years and was pensioned off in 1985. Derek's here, but it's not the good-looking spider that's caught his eye. Scooters. Oh, yeah. Ah, you do with these. Nice, aren't they? Yeah, I love them. <laughs> well, I bet you do, yeah. I must have had a hundred. Have you? Yeah. Wow. Were you a muddy boy, then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's great. I've never seen so many, you know, like, sort of similar lined up. <laughs> oh, I think it's brilliant, mate. Nice to see them used and all. I do like them. I do like to go out with them. I bet you do. Yeah, a little bit of right. Yeah, that's it. Straighten up now. Yep, you're there now. That's it. I personally think yeah, it's worth 9,500 quid. And it is only a gut feeling because I ain't got anything to go by either. Shall we reserve it at nine? Yeah. And guide it at nine and a half, ten and a half? That's all right. That's the thing. It's only wet what someone's prepared to pay for it. Very Italian. You see, like, slick back hair, can't you? Winkle pickers and all the rest of it. A lot of work goes on getting cars ready for the auction. Lost count how many we've done today. How many have we done? Um, Never mind that, keep going. <laughs> a lot. But some motors are deliberately left looking a bit tatty. An original car can make very good money. And over in North Wales, a vehicle that stood for 19 years is about to emerge. It's Alan Holmes' son's car, and it's a sleeping dragon, a 1983 Ford Escort RS1600i. My son bought this shortly after I'd bought an RS2000. We had a, a few other Fords at the time, but he wanted that car. I couldn't help but like it, you know. The Recaro seats, the whole thing, really. It's a very nice car. A practical car, being a hatchback. A family racing car. I think it was appealed to everyone. We all liked them. At a time when XR3Is were everywhere, the RS, with its bonnet stripes, set you apart. Ford specced it to race, which meant there was more to go wrong. It was on the road for a very short time. He had problems and he had to get the gearbox done. He needed a car for work and bought another car. This one was relegated to the garage while the gearbox was done up. But unfortunately, it's just sat here since then. Very much a Ford man. I just like all the cars, really. There's a model in every range, isn't there? And I could never bring myself to buy a Golf. <laughs> When Ford redesigned the Escort with a boot lid that had space for a huge rubber spoiler, the XR3 was born. But its laddish style wasn't enough. For something a bit special, Ford returned the RS name for a more faithful driver's car. It had a CVH engine you could boast about, with a ribbed cam cover and solid lifters. It went faster. Built in Cologne, Ford planned to make just 5,000, but were so popular, they made a few more. 2,600 came to the UK, and 35 years later, there aren't many left. And this one is in a rare colour, too. Only 250 were painted in Ford's Strato Silver. It's a car that will get a lot of people very excited. I'd like to see it renovated and like to see it brought back to excellent condition. I would have thought you'd be starting at six or seven thousand. I, ca I can't imagine it fetching much less. <laughs> Come on, Lou, let's be on. The pair of restoration-ready MGSAs from Hull have arrived in Pickering. Yeah, to be fair, if you were going to restore one, you'd want them both, wouldn't you? Well, I think you would, yeah. And it's a golden opportunity to buy two, you won't get another one. They'll both need more than a bit of touching up. No steering wheel, no problem. 
But Paul can see their potential. They make a beautiful car, aren't they? Very elegant, aren't they? I bet they're a fabulous car when they're done. Big six-cylinder, aren't they? Loads of power. Make the right noises. A fantastic car. All right, then. Oh, then we're in, look, we're in. Derek is full of admiration. The guy must have had a heart like a football. I mean, you've got to admire this guy. And he's dragged it out and he's got this far. He's been fabricating panels and putting bits in and he's been doing a good job. I expect them to make towards 10,000 each. Um, the call now. And there's the call now saying, have you got any MGSAs coming up in the next auction? Um, um, so that's what we're expecting them, them to, to do. Yeah, I'm only next door here. And they're quite a rare bit of kit. Very valuable, 40, 45, 50,000 quid, looking nice and you know, quite comfortably. Um, heck of a car. And of course, they carry the MG badge, which is the most important thing. And he has a hunch about who might snap them up. We're going to offer them separately, individually, but I'm really, really hoping, and common sense tells me, that well, a buyer will be able to buy the two cars. I think it makes so much more sense that these two cars have got to stop in the same shed and be rebuilt alongside each other, side by side. Oh my days. Elsewhere in the showroom, the Fiat Spider has arrived from the northeast. Car washer Jeffrey Bubbles has taken a shine to it. Quite a smart looking little sporty car. And, and quite rare, you don't see many about. And many of the panels are aluminium for lightweight. A nice tidy interior. Um, it's been re registered in the UK, but we do have its original. Texas registration plate. I like the colour. It's got everything going for it. It's got a rarity value. Just depends if someone can live with the left-hand drive element. Did you see yourself pottering around in this? No. Not no. Really? Too old. Too old. Too old. And the steering wheel's on the wrong side. I want to see what's coming towards me. Eric's arrived in the depths of Wales to collect the RS1600i, owned by Alan Holmes' son. Now then, sir. Good run over. It was really hectic. And the rain. Oh. Let's go and have a look there and see what we got. Oh. Ah, yeah. Have you, have you moved it at all? Are we, uh, are we assuming that the brakes are sticky but not yeah. seized? When I spoke with you and you said, don't do anything with it, I've left it. Yeah, you have, haven't you? Right, we'd better... Uh... Crack on then. Let's see about getting some wind in the tyres for a start off. It'll, it'll probably want a good service before it goes. It's a, yeah, it's yeah, it. yeah, absolutely, yeah. First impressions then, Derek? Horrible. But it's a um, saleable model, isn't it? As long as the underside's OK, which I'm sure it will be, then um, someone will put it back on the road and it'll be their pride and joy, won't it, eventually? Yeah, look at that. She's going up lovely. Back ones are reasonable, so we'll perhaps get away with them. Can't see too much of the inside yet. Must. Isn't that an aftershave in the 70s? <laughs> yeah. Loads of interest, there really will be. And we'll just leave it I, as it is. Yeah, so it's the way to do it. Was time with the idea of a ballot in no. no, I wouldn't do. No, because no, all you're going to be doing, then you're dressing it up for someone, and they don't want it dressed up. They want to see it like that. And most of the guys that buy this would want to find it like that. You know, exactly here. No, leave it as it is, absolutely, dead right. I'll get uh, parked up ready. With a bit of luck, we'll have her on. Oh, my God. I'm going to wind up pulling herself out in a minute. <laughs> uh, only where to anchor anything to, Alan? Plan is to <laughs> pull myself backwards, if I can. <laughs> We go. We can get a little pull on it. We're laughing, aren't we? Oh, ever the optimist, me. It's moving. Look, look at it. Once we get a bit of resistance, it'll free up. You won't see. This is where we've got to be careful. Oh, loads of room. 25% of the tyres on. You're laughing. There you are. Oh, perfect. 
I think the reason why we get so many is because once you do something in the way of a, a fast forward or a mini cooper or something like that, people see it and all the others come out of the woodwork, you know. I mean, they obviously think, oh, I'll ring them fellas up. They'll come and get that car. That idiot, the old one, he'll come and get it. And he don't mind groveling around on the ground and getting soaking wet and all the rest of it. I'll give him a call. Alan, there's going to be two figures, really, isn't there? There's one, what it's worth. There's another one, what it's going to achieve. Yes. Um, and in my experience of these, they're it going to achieve, achieve a lot more than, more than you think it's worth. Oh, it's going to do that all right. I think, I think they sort of do like 10 grand, don't they, or something in nice order and stuff. I, they do. You know, it? it's going to do very well. Good. I hope it does. Tim, it's Mark at Matthewson's Auctions. The escort needs love and attention. How are we doing? But the Swiss Italian is good enough to go. Lot number 94 is Fiat Spider. Lovely looking little car. 9,005 there, Jack. 9,005. 9,750. Anyone want to round it up to 10? 10,000 we're looking for. 10,000 we've got. Thank you. Next one's 10,250. We've got 10,250. Are we all done? At 10,250. It is provisional. We'll try for you. 10,250. 10,250, Jack, with your man. A couple of grand under reserve, but Paul seals the deal. He was optimistic and hoping that for around about the 12 mark, um, in actual fact, to sold for £10,250. To which he said, absolutely marvellous. Thank you ever so much. So he's happy belly. Yeah. So uh, that's another one done. Derek's arrived in Pickering with the Escort RS1600i from North Wales. The car's a non-runner. Getting it off the trailer will require some local muscle. Paperwork there for uh, that one outside there, look. Um, only thing is, girls, we need a bit of a push. Just doing my usual rate. Oh, yeah, hello, who made these? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I think you need a cup of tea with them, though, Derek. Do you? I don't know, they've gone a bit out. Two of them behind the back wheel of that escort never run away. And uh, part of the job description was uh, pushing cars about. Is there a job description? I'm going to look like I'm pushing. I've got it off to a T, so you just kind of do the face. And a grunt, but you don't actually push. We are ready. Put your coats on. It's spitting. <laughs> now then, who wants to sit in? It's a bit mingy in there. No, last time I sat in when I got wet pants. It's really, it's really mingy in there. Ooh, it's horrible. You have a look inside. Oh, I don't even want to touch the door. Look, look at that. Oh. I put my hand in here yesterday. It was all wet and slimy and bleeding horrible. It gets... Ugh. This is me looking like I'm pushing. Oh. <laughs> Shaking the edge on, that's my role. Yeah. Dad's involved, so it's going to be a drama, isn't it? Well, it's all a new set of nails at this Are point. we going then? Yeah. You ready? Go on, girls. Go on. Oh, my God. Ah. Well done, girls. Thank you very much. I knew they'd come in handy sooner or later. Found their true vocation. Ah. The Escort joins a showroom of vehicles of all shapes and sizes. From workhorses to head turners and the items that make everyone smile. Oh! With the auction closed to the public, a mountain of memorabilia has been gathering dust. Probably had stuff stored now since last March. Just trying to make a dent on it, really. Amongst the knick-knacks, a growing pile of children's toys that push the nostalgia button. Scar Electric, here we are, 170 pounds. Are the cars there with it as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the whole caboodle. Oh, it's like brand new. Well, it is brand new. Up for grabs is this 1950s pedal car. Triang was one of the big names of the British toy industry, churning out press steel novelties for kids across the land. Oh, it's the clown one. 
Bubba, bubba. Yeah, okay. There we are. The little pedal car there. 150, 200, 200 pound. At 200 pound. At 200, at 220. At 240 with you, Will. 260 with you. At 280. On the web there at 280 for the first, for the second, third and last time at 280. Oh. We'll try for you. We just need a little bit more. A deal's eventually done. The Triang goes for 300 quid and heads for a new home in the northeast. Some playthings are easier to sell than others. Today, Paul's on photographing duties with the Escort RS1600i. It would also mean the prospective purchaser could see a lot more of what he was prospectively purchasing. In the motor trade, a picture... Nasty scratch on there. ...almost as powerful as the words. Bonnet's gone pretty bad. Bit of rust. Only surface, but rust. Inner wings all look really good, really solid. Battery tray, again, solid. Scruffy, but solid. It should be. I don't know where this dude's looking for a bit of welding. Oh, there. You feel such a deep stick, don't you? Rabbit, you know, where? Seeing the stuff you normally see in your head. In my opinion, this car would do a lot better it was clean. There's the famous old saying, isn't there? You could clean 500 pound onto a car. And more importantly, you can clean a sail into a car. The grime doesn't bother Dave. Someone will take it on, I would think, just really for the pleasure of doing it. There's a lot of guys out there that get, that get more pleasure from doing that than they do driving it and then sell it. It doesn't want a lot of bits, does it really? It just wants Stripping out, coat of paint, a big refurb, you know, and then putting it all back together again. So it's not like space shuttle stuff, is it? So. Originality sells. This motor will go just as it is. That car will achieve around £10,000, that's what I think. With the auction pending, the part restored MGSAs yeah. and the many boxes of bits are taking some sorting. Uh, it's a bit more than a few weekends' work, isn't it? They're a big jigsaw puzzle, aren't they? These treasured cars need saving. And the Matthewsons need to find a buyer with the time and skill to take them on. The cars need a new owner with the determination and dedication of a father and son team with a shared passion. I want to check the oil, yes. Like Jim and Mark Baldry, who spent 20 happy years in the garage keeping their treasured MGSA in fine shape. 1936 to 1939 MGSA, produced to fill a market which was new to MG because they're sort of sporting cars, and this is a sporting saloon, so it was aimed at the luxury end of the sporting market. Six-cylinder engine, 2.3 litre approximately because they changed the size through the production. The early cars had a vented bonnet, a sl slatted bonnet. The later cars went to these opening vents here to allow cold air to get in to cool the engine. A beautiful shape, beautiful tactile lines. It's, it's a stunning looking car. I said to Mum, one of these days I'm going to have one of those. I mean, I'm a petrol head because and my father was and my brother. But it's in the genes. As a youngster, I saw a picture on cigarette cards of this model, and I said, one day I'm going to have one of those. The car, when they bought it, was in a good state of repair, but very, very tired. The paintwork was tired, mechanically it was tired, but there was no corrosion on it, and it was a very, very good basis for recommissioning. But Mark helped me and we worked through all the mechanics and got it going. Oh, smile this big. From here to here, huge smile, because she was great. Everybody that saw it loved it. You have to drive it according to how that car was built. It's not like jumping into your modern Ford or Jaguar or whatever and selecting drive and off you go. You're fighting with a big piece of equipment that is heavy to drive, quite a lump to stop, but gives phenomenal pleasure. 
because you've achieved your goal by restoring it. Around 2,700 MGSAs were made, but fewer than 10% have survived. And this one is staying with the Baltries. How important for you is it that this car stays within your family? I'm driving that to my funeral. Uh, very important. Hello, Matthewson. Back in Pickering, it's sale day, and the troops okay. in the office are said to be dispatched <laughs> to the auction room. Obviously, I'm in the minority with that. With a stack of phone bids lined up for the Welsh 1600i, the girls will have to leave their posts and head to the trenches. There's 18 phone bids on that. 18. Yeah. Wow. Blimey, Charlie. Have you got 18 people on the phones? No, 12. <laughs> So, excuse so because, my ignorance. Because we're female, we can multitask. We have to go out while getting money in and answering queries and doing results. And uh, uh, and make phone bids. Really? And they wonder why I get headache. <laughs> so what else can go wrong? What have we got to worry about? We've got the uh, escort. Yep. Everyone have got somebody on the phone. Uh, here it is, 83 Escort RS 1600. It's very important for buyers to get a background of cars like this. You know, a, a bit of, bit of, bit of provenance is very, very... My father's waffling on a bit, then get on. I should have stayed up there myself. Yeah, I know. Hang on, here he is. I've got bids on my books, we've got bids on the phone, so it's five, five and a half, oh, ten and a half, ten thousand five hundred, and we're away. Ten thousand, eleven, eleven thousand. He um, didn't settle on anything for definite, but I know they'll be happy. He did, yeah. It wanted to be ten grand plus some fees. The rest of the phones are out, 12.5, the internet's back in, you're out now, Mark. On sale and going, 12.750, as it's you, will you do that? 13,000, thank you, sir, 13 and a quarter, 13.250, 13.5. You cannot find them like this, can you? We all know that, that's why. 13.750 on my right, gonna sell it. Be warned, 13.750, sell in. 13.750. Thank you. Right, mate, see you later. All right, then. Thank you very much. The Escort goes for almost nine grand more than the guide price. Everyone wanted to give about 10,000 for it. Seems to be anything like this, they're just making silly money, really. But the guys I really feel for are the underbidders, obviously. They've all tried and they've all looked at it with, with, with optimism, thinking, I'm going to buy that, I'm going to buy that car. Oh, I'm going to give X amount of pound, I bet I'll buy that car, I'm sure. There won't be anyone outbid me on that. And then someone comes along and wallop. <laughs> Poor old lad. They're the guys I feel for. Now. In a garage in deepest Surrey, a once mighty motor is being reborn. A few months after the auction, a back-to-basics job is underway on the Escort RS1600i that spends almost two decades in a lockup, And it's all the handiwork of former mechanic Brian Welsh. Completely stripped the vehicle out. It's done a lot of the panel work, welding, fabrication, because it needed a lot of that to be done. And once he got his hands on the car, well, Brian just couldn't stop. We've had a new wing on there. Um, New front panel, because when the wing was off, the front panel was, wasn't great, so I replaced that as well. And again, a new wing on the other side. In the engine bay, obviously removed all the engine, etc. And then when I removed all of that, it made it much easier to see there was rust around the engine bay and previous repairs. I thought perhaps I was gonna buy a vehicle, clean it, a little bit of paintwork and drive it. I ended up doing more than I perhaps thought I'd ever do. Having taken it to bits, Brian's putting the car back together again. A lot of them won't have survived, and some of the ones that perhaps the rust just got too much of them. This wasn't a bad one, it, it just needed some detailing and attention. It's probably better than it was when it left the factory in Germany. It's been repaired, it's got a, a, a much better coating on it now, and I would think it will last another 30, 40 years. The Escort sold for almost 14 grand. But the lure of working again on an 80s classic was just too much. I guess back then, repairing a Ford Escort was probably an everyday job. 
Um, so when I got this, it was just a case of I knew memories came back of how to do it. Of its time and its day, lots of XR3Is around. If I was going to do one and, and, and spend time and money, why not do a 1600i? There's probably three or four thousand pounds spent in parts, but the labour contents are big. If I spend a week, you know, I'm not spending a week of, of, of 60 pounds an hour and, and, and a lot of weeks. And I'm probably six months into it now. I've probably got another three or four months before it's back on the road. I'm looking forward to finishing it and driving it. <laughs>
that leaves you £65,000 leeway on those two cars. Three They're six. probably not, not actually going to spend any more than 25, 30 grand. Say 30 grand on them two cars. 30 grand from 65, even I know, and, I, and I'm not the most clever in the world, okay, I'll, but I'll I can add up and take away. Number, that yeah. leaves. Right. <laughs> that leaves 35 grand safety net. That's your parachute. That is really those two cars you cannot fail. People laugh at them and say, oh no, 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 you won't get anyone to take them on. Just want someone with a bit of savvy, a little bit of foresight, and uh, and there it is. Figures, what can't speak, can't lie. The figures are sorted. But there's still much to do on the MGSAs. It's a bit uh, cluttered in here. We have a new home in Hartlepool with mechanic John Arkley. I just like old cars. A lot of people my age like 70s cars and 80s cars, but I'm sort of a bit odd. I prefer older cars. Derek always says the people that are into pre-war cars are all dying off, but I'm not. The plan was to get one, but ended up with two. To make sure I'd got all the bits, because they were mixed up with between both cars. John's got a business to run, but he's dedicating Friday afternoons to his pet project. Done the engine. The engine was in bits. Partly done, but there was parts missing on it, so we had to get the missing bits and assemble the engine. It's not quite ready to run yet, but... It should be in a few more weeks. When you look at, for a four-seater saloon, when you look at the chassis and the steering wheel, you sat nearer the back than the front. You'd think it was a two-seater by the way to lay down. I'm hoping as soon as the shell is painted, I will get the shell onto the chassis, and then I can start putting the floors in, the floors are made of plywood. Then I can start on the interior and do the doors and bits and just gradually put the jigsaw puzzle back together. It's like having two, three day jigsaws with all the bits muddled up in them and some bits not there. <laughs> That's the dash. I didn't veneer it, the veneer was okay on it. All I did was rub it down and lacquer it. Christmas Day I did that. Yeah. <laughs> I <spent. laughs> there wasn't much on the television, so I thought I'll do my dashboard on Christmas Day. John's loved MG since he was a kid and plans to tour the car shows with his finished motors. But in the short term, he won't be taking them home. It's about a foot longer than the garage. <laughs> so he might have to stay here till I get the extension done on the garage. By right, it would have probably been made into bean tins 50 years ago, but uh, it'll never get scrapped now. Would have to be something serious go wrong before it was ever taken off the road again. <laughs>